Good morning, and welcome back to our Newman Lumen series. My name is Allison Pelhees, and I serve as the Multifaith Coordinator for the Truett Center for Religious and Spiritual Life at Elon. It is my pleasure to put together this speaker series. In choosing the theme, Bridging to Hope, we wanted to find opportunities for us to share in our learning about what it means to be hopeful during this season. We share stories to find comfort, but we also share stories to build resilience. This morning, our speaker is a student. Alicia Powell is a senior here at Elon University and is majoring in public health with minors in biology and African American studies. She is from Charlotte, North Carolina, is an Odyssey Scholar and Apartment Manager, and also on the President's Student Leadership Advisory Council. At home, Alicia works and interns with residents with Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia as a certified nursing assistant with aspirations to become a physician's assistant, doula, midwife, or nurse practitioner. At this time, Jeff, who is filming, and I are going to leave the space so that Alicia can remove her mask and speak to you. So without further ado, here's Alicia. Hello, everybody. My name is Alicia Powell, and as Allison so beautifully said, um, I am a senior here at Elon University, um, majoring in public health with minors in biology and African and African American studies. Um, I was asked to speak to you all today, um, so happy post-homecoming week. It's actually still homecoming right now, um, but currently, but when y'all see this, it'll be past that, and I hope y'all had a great homecoming week. I hope everyone is finding their hope, um, as I will be speaking about today. I was asked to speak um, for Newman Lumen with you all today, um, and I just want to say hello to the Elon community. I would like to say hello to students, faculty, family, um, everybody within this community. Um, and I was asked to speak about bridging hope in the midst of a pandemic, and you know the fight of for the fight for freedom and systemic racism to. End. Um, we are in a tumultuous moment in history with police brutality, with gun violence, with um, hate being spewed at the presidential level, and it's not, it's not, um, can't hide it anymore in America. Um, and I am grateful for this time um, of deep reflection and of so much change um, for the good and the bad. Um, but I do want to speak on my experiences this year and throughout my life. Um, I'm at a point in my life, I think, where I'm able to be able to articulate um, how I'm feeling and uh, maybe give you some hope at the end of this, which is what I've been trying to find. Um, so finding hope can be very hard. Um, we oftentimes find ourselves anchored to the ground and being brought down by external forces. So for me personally, that is police brutality. That is the burden of, you know, being the first in my family to receive certain things that I've received, such as going to Elon University um, on a full ride scholarship as an Odyssey scholar. Um, that's also being able to travel abroad for a semester at sea, for a whole semester, um, for free, honestly, because of scholarships. And, you know, being the first in your family to do anything is, is a big, it's a big commitment, it's a big responsibility, it's a big burden. And so I try to find solace in knowing that I am resilient. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. Um, I have paved the way, hopefully, for future generations to come, my future children, theirs, you know? It's just, it's a big, it's a big responsibility to be in this moment in history and also to have the positions that I do have. So 
currently on Elon's campus. Um, I am an Elon Odyssey Scholar, the Commitment Scholarship. Um, I am an apartment manager in Oaks, as well as a member of President Student Leadership Advisory Council, where I work alongside Dr. Book and senior staff, as well as John Dooley and Randy Williams. Um, and I am also, um, I was a part of Semester at Sea, which was a program where I studied abroad and went to um, Hawaii, Japan, Vietnam, Mauritius, and South Africa. And we ended um, halfway through our voyage uh, because of COVID. And that was the first time in my life where I was able to not work. I led Black Student Union with my best friend now, one of my best friends, his name's Barnabas. Um, he goes to CSU and he's amazing. And we both led Semester at Sea, but there was only about less than 50 students of color on a ship board community with about 500 students. Um, and particularly going to Asia, my identity was challenged as it is in America. Um, so going to Africa this year and touching down on Mauritius and South Africa, oh my goodness, like those were the best places I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, and my family, we've only been out of the country once. We went to Jamaica. Um, my dad was born in Jamaica. He was born in Kingston. Um, and traveling was just never an option for my mom's side of the family or my dad's. Um, it was always work. It was always providing for the family. It was always not always, but a lot of the time it was struggling. And there's beauty in struggling, especially in the black community. So I am from Charlotte, North Carolina, um, although I was born in Long Island, New York, and to two very loving parents. I love my parents with everything. I love my family with everything. Um, it is just a transitional time for us. I recently moved out of my house. Um, officially and you know that is me setting boundaries for myself and being resilient um, I'm taking all my classes online which is a struggle because I want to build relationships with my residents I want to walk around campus and not be harassed which I was um, a few weeks ago once on campus by a truck driver that was a Trump supporter in the wake of um, the Trump caravan that drove through our campus spewing hate and racism at our students that pay to be here, our young adults. Um, carrying, they were carrying guns, like harassing students. And that is the scariest thing ever. My sister goes to Chapel Hill um, where they had the Silent Sam protest and took down that Confederate um, statue and it was a big issue for a long time and a lot of students did not feel safe and now that our campus has been plagued by hate um, we've had several demonstrations with BSU um, to combat hate um, which is why I'm firmly and boldly putting up justice for Breonna Taylor even though she did not get justice because she was shot in her bed by police officers and that's why I'm promoting Black Lives Matter, because any other protest is a protest against our protest. Black Lives Matter because black lives have been so heavily impacted for centuries by institutionalized racism, slavery, so many things that need to end. And that's gonna happen with my generation. I don't remember any protest happening when I was younger and I see protests happening every week, and that brings me hope. And I hope that this younger generation is inspiring you all watching this. I'm not telling you who to vote for. Vote for who, you, who follows your values, but America needs to wake up. We have been dormant for a long time. We've been putting Band-Aids on racism and hate, and that has to cease. Um, I come to you all today from a place of exhaustion, um, from a place of pain, of hurt, of anger, and frustration. Um, Trayvon Martin did not deserve 
to die. Breonna Taylor did not deserve to die. Millions of my ancestors were kidnapped from their home in Africa, and they did not deserve that. And frankly, we built this nation up on our backs, and we're still feeling that pain today. Before, it was shackles and chains. Um, during the Reagan administration um, and the Nixon administration, it was institutionalized racism on the basis of law and order and being hard on crime. If you watch the movie 13th, you'll see this. And so today, we have systemic racism that's trickled into our schools. It's trickled into our workplaces. It's trickled into our daily lives. It's just not as transparent as it was in the past. There's no whites only anymore. There's no segregation, but it's different. It's the new Jim Crow. The prison industrial complex, this, that whole system, which Prudence Lane teaches about, and Buffy Longmire Avital as well on Elon's campus. They're phenomenal women. And Sandra Reed. There's not many black professors on our campus. I am minoring in African and African American studies, and I've only had two black professors teach me about black history out of the five courses that I've had. Um, and I love my class right now for community psych because we're learning about all the things that I'm speaking to you about. So I encourage you to take it if you're a student here. Um, and I don't want to make this about myself. I don't, this is an issue bigger than all of us, but I know I do have a voice and I have a platform to speak on these issues. And I'm not afraid to do so. Um, I've been censored. I've been, uh, <clears throat> I've been a lot of things. I've been broken down and picked back up. This summer um, was the first summer that I've, I've dealt with depression. This, this was the first time in my life I've ever been depressed, was this summer, um, right after I got back from semester at sea, because it was literally coming out of a dream, going into a nightmare with COVID, with racism. I was not on my phone when I was abroad. And if I was, it was to check in on my money or my bank account, but it was not to see the news because we, we're used to watching the news and we're desensitized to it. Um, I have parents that watch it religiously, and I used to, but I can't anymore because it's not good for my health. It's not good for my well-being. It's not good for anybody it's to watch that every day. We're not living in normal times. America needs a facelift. The world does, but in particular, we are the only nation that was built on blatant slavery, and it's still continuing so overtly today. We're the only nation that has the highest cases of COVID because our president won't wear a mask, which I will wear right after this to go eat. <laughs> um, but um, I just need everybody to wake up. It's not a matter of a lesser evil. It's not a matter of a greater good. It's a matter of right and wrong. And this president is wrong in his attacks against the black community, in his constant dividing of everybody from journalists just reporting a story to, to everything that he touches. And it's not funny anymore. Four years ago, people took it as a joke. I cried when that man got elected, as well as my friends who are DACA recipients, Odyssey scholars, scared for their lives not just black people. The Latinx community is heavily impacted by Trump's policies, especially with DACA. <laughs> These are lives being tampered with on the basis of politics. COVID is taken as a joke in the administration. Millions have died. My, our family pastor in New York, he died of COVID. He was renowned, and they couldn't even go in the funeral. They had to drive through. Um, 
my uncle has been impacted by COVID and he got over it in New York, but it's still scary. My dad has diabetes and my sister has asthma. So I chose to be remote this semester and that's difficult within itself because I like to ask questions in class. I like to know what I'm talking about and to know what's going on as a scholar. And the fact that I can't do that, I have to kind of learn on my own this semester and I can't have floor meetings with my residents in Oaks. And I want to, cause they're all amazing, but COVID, you know, we're back at level one. We went from level two to level three overnight. And in the wake of the Trump caravan driving through campus, our president, with all due respect, but our president did say to respect the people that drove through our campus. And as a black woman who's been harassed many times, sexually, verbally, physically, um, and as many women have in terms of rape or domestic violence or anything, as a black woman though, that hurt. And I know Dr. Book is the first president of Elon and she's doing amazing. They're all trying so hard. I work with them behind the scenes with President Student Leadership Advisory Council and they're, they're working very hard, um, but, it, but more needs to be done. And I'm gonna give some suggestions right now. I think Elon needs to hire more black professors I think Elon needs to hire more professors that will teach about the actual history of our nation instead of this president of the United States of America who is aiming to erase the critical race theory which teaches about slavery because it looks bad on America. I suggest Elon hires and actually brings people who have a love for teaching, which so many faculty do. And so all of my professors have been amazing. I will say that. Elon's an amazing campus, beautiful. But I don't even feel comfortable walking out of my room anymore, my apartment. I had to get pepper spray. Um, I'm getting a bike from a great, generous gift from the Truett Center. Um, and you know, it's just, it's been that hard to get, even get around campus. I don't feel comfortable even walking around anymore. And that freshman year, I loved to walk around campus. I have to go with a friend. My friend Aiden walked me to dinner the day that I got harassed by a truck driver. He, the truck driver yelled, um, that he wants to pull my hair. It was right after I actually filmed for ENN about police brutality. Um, and it was just disgusting because I've never been in that situation before. I've never uh, been that like blatantly disrespected. Um, I was just walking to my room, minding my business. Hey, can I pull your hair? Like, you know? And my friend got, um, my best friend Serena, she also got something yelled at her about asking for her Snapchat, and that's not okay. As women, we're, we were terrified. We had to submit reports, and I encourage anybody who is harassed to submit us a report, a bias report, ASAP, right after it happens, which is what we did, and it got followed up, and they couldn't identify it, but even during the Trump caravan, the truck drivers harassing students, they couldn't get their uh, license plates, all of them, for, to issue no trespassing. So I feel as though Elon needs to adapt um, a safer community where maybe there's checkpoints. My friend Haley Hauser suggested checkpoints um, because we have a few main entrances and this is a private university. So I feel as though they should have been made aware that truck drivers on the mission to intimidate black students and promote their white agenda, feel as though our community should have warned students. We get e-alerts about thunderstorms and about weather, but we don't get any about white supremacists coming to campus harassing students with guns. I have, I have so many stories of friends who've seen that, who saw it firsthand and were terrified. 
terrified. God forbid someone brought a gun and shot a black student. Would that be enough to wake y'all up when another one of us dies? What if it was me? What if I was walking and I just see a Trump caravan right outside, it was right outside from my apartment in Oaks. It was right on Haggard, middle of campus, this private institution. Even though I'm on scholarship, I have people who I'm here for. Um, so do the other 8% of students that go here that are black. So I would like for the administration to take these concerns serious because someone can get hurt as Heather Heyer did when she was murdered and ran over by a Trump supporter and white supremacist, a part of the alt-right group or the Proud Boys, which he has so blatantly not condemned and actually supported at the debate recently. I've been published and interviewed many times this year um, from Greensboro News and Record to ENN um, to The Edge Magazine. Um, and as president of my sorority, which is the Xi Omicron chapter of the illustrious Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, um, I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. I'm a senior. Um, I work so hard. I have above a 3.0, well above a 3.0, and I've received many honors from Black Excellence Awards to uh, I'm a CNA, so I got recognized for that. Um, I work with residents with Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia whenever I'm home in Charlotte, um, just for clinical hours because I would like to go to PA school eventually, or I would love to become a doula or a midwife or anything to help women, particularly black women. I've had four deaths of black mothers before the age of 55 that have died within two years in my life. My ex-best friend's mother, I don't even need to list it, but it's true. I've had so much death surrounding me and it's terrifying, I, I am terrified because I want my mom to be happy and other black moms to be healthy and happy and have good well-being practices because as a public health major, that's what I study. I study how drugs are infiltrated into black communities and the war on drugs is a war on lower income minority communities, black and brown, not just black people, the Latinx community as well, and they're being heavily impacted by COVID too. I recently had um, a friend who died of a drug overdose. Um, her name was Hope. And so this talk means so much to me because I tried to help her and um, she was just, she had demons and she, was, she would have been 22. And hearing about that, it was the scariest thing ever. Um, and trying to deal with that and cope with everything that's been going on in my life internally and externally. This is the first time I found my voice. This is the first time I feel confident in myself. 2020, um, going abroad changed my life for the better. I have a voice and I'm not afraid to use it. And I implore anyone with a platform, no matter what, how many followers you have, if it's one, post about these things. Don't remain silent, especially my black, my black viewers on this. Y'all have been doing so much, but it's time for white people to pick up this burden that has essentially been caused by white people in terms of colonialism and colonization. Watch the movie Black Panther and you'll see it. Watch Roots, 13th. Um, the list goes on and I have resources on my Instagram. If you look in my Instagram bio at Alicia Powell, um, I have plenty of resources, a plethora of articles that I've been in or stories that I think are important to share. And I encourage you all to share those as well if you can. 
or talk to me. Like, I love DMing people about these issues. I can talk about it all day because I live it every day. I have like a target on my back in America. White, black women are treated so poorly. Look at Megan the Stallion with her shooting and people not believing her and still supporting Tory Lanez. And look at how Cardi B is treated or Oprah Winfrey whenever something bad happens or Michelle Obama when they didn't even allow her to wear certain dresses because they weren't appropriate. Um, Michelle Obama in particular is my role model because she has been called a monkey, she's been called all the names in the book, the N-word, and she still rises and she run, her platform is basically saying, when they go low, we go high. So I will leave you all with this. We have to unlearn things in America. We have to learn how to love each other and communicate and talk to each other. We have to learn how to support black people and black businesses. My friend Kenny has a business on ECU's campus called Colorful Desires, and it's amazing. It supports minority businesses on college campuses, and he's expanding, and I hope that attention from this video can go towards him too, because he's doing great work on his campus as well. There's so many other student leaders that look like me that are doing great um, and deserve recognition as well. So I will leave you um, on one thing. And I'm going to get a little personal, but this summer I dealt with depression and I suffered from um, suicidal ideation. And I'm not afraid to say that because we are always so afraid to say things in America. And I feel like making yourself uncomfortable is essential to growth. I've only been uncomfortable this year, all year. I've had panic attacks, I've had anxiety attacks. Nobody know, knew about it. Nobody knew I was struggling this summer. I, nobody knew I had a date. But I would never do that to my family. And um, I'm learning to love myself. Um, if you see me on campus, I'm, I'm very bubbly. I'm, I love to laugh, I love life. Um, and I love love. And I hate hate. <laughs> I don't hate a lot of things, but I hate racism and hate, and I encourage you to support this mission that black people are taking on, that white people need to take on too, instead of just posting a black square on a Tuesday for Blackout Tuesday. Elon has brought Nikki Haley to campus, who is an avid supporter of Trump, who told us basically in a keynote to respect the man, when that man does not respect me, my family, or black people, frankly. And we're tired of it, because black women have been against Trump since before he got elected. Um, so we knew this was coming. And as you see now, the situation we're in with police brutality, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, apartheid in Africa, like, it's not just America. I went to Africa, and there's still systemic racism there as well. So once we learn to love each other, because this generation will not take anything else, we're too intersectional to not love each other. And if you don't support that agenda, then you don't support me. And you can't argue with me about that anymore. Um, so support, empathize, vote. Vote like your lives depend on it, and vote like your ancestors died for it, because mine did. And yours did too. Um, whether it was to suppress the black vote or whether it was to gain voting rights when we did, like the 13th Amendment. So I encourage you all to have hope. If you're called selfish, good. I've been called selfish about five times this year by people who I love and who I thought loved me, think loved me, I don't really know. But um, I've been called selfish, manipulative, a liar, a lot of things that I know I'm not. Um, 
And sometimes you need to be told those things to wake up and to see who you really are and to know your power um, and to, to find your voice. Um, I cannot stress enough how important it is to reach out for help if you need it. Uh, I have family members who have been institutionalized, who have dealt with homelessness, who uh, didn't know where their next meal was gonna come from, who have been in jail, who have also been suicidal, very close to me in my life, and I, I don't even have to mention who, but they're better, they're alive, we're all alive. I'm sure so many people have deal, dealt with anxiety. I just got diagnosed with having anxiety, depression, and general adjustment issues by my therapist, who's amazing. Um, go to therapy, especially men. Men don't know how to talk about things like women. Women don't have wars. Like Women just want to have their rights and not have Planned Parenthood taken and Roe v. Wade overturned like they're trying to do in the midst of RBG's death. R.I.P. Um, and so she was a powerful woman. So I implore all of y'all to do your parts in this community, outside of this community, not just by posting on Instagram. I post every day, like a, honestly like clockwork, like I should probably be paid to do it, but it's like I'm teaching people how to not be racist. And that's not my job. I'm a student too. I'm a human being. I'm just black and I'm just a woman. I was born that way. Can't change it. Don't want to change it. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of my family. I'm proud of my ancestors and my history because they've been through everything and I feel them in my blood and in my veins. And that is why I keep going. And that is why I will always rise because I have people to live for. I have myself to live for. So I'm starting to love Alicia and not be, ah, uh, insecure anymore. Um, I used to have eating issues. When I cheered, I made varsity sophomore year. And I remember my cheer coach told me that um, I would not make varsity. And I was one of the only ones that made varsity sophomore year. And I was a flyer. Like I flew and everything. Um, and I tumbled. I did backflips and stuff. And I made it. And I love proving people wrong. Um, and you should too. Prove people wrong. If you're selfish, be selfish. Care about yourself finally. Because this is the first time that I am starting to. I was in a relationship for eight years. And, you know, it was great until it wasn't. And um, moving on and just trying to change and be single and be happy again. Like, it's a journey. It's a journey. If, and it's not easy. But I'm doing it. And I'm proud to say that. I'm proud to be alive. Honestly, it's, it's a miracle. And I'm very glad that I'm still here and that, you know, I'm still able to speak on these issues. And I ran for homecoming to raise more awareness to these issues with my platform. So I hope you all just find hope in your own way. Um, I would be happy to speak with any of you personally if this resonated with you any part of it. Um, I love feedback and I want to continue to do this. I hope, you know, celebrities can come together and make a song like We Are the World about what's going on today because these are not normal times and we need something. We need something. College kids are going crazy because they can't party um, and they're just studying all day long. <laughs> um, so, I encourage you all to not culturally appropriate for Halloween and to fight for black rights and fight for this movement because we're tired of seeing our brothers and sisters dying and not being able to breathe for eight minutes and 46 seconds. We're tired. We're exhausted. I hope you are too. Thank you.